So there's nothing more discouraging to me than to see a 10 or 15 year old who people have given up on. So for those of you with older children, I want you to meet Adrian. <clears throat> she's on your left. And she's on your right, sorry. <laughs> Um, last May, Adrian, at the age of 17 and a half, started the specific carbohydrate diet, and it took only a short time to see dramatic changes in her general demeanor. She was noticeably more calm, no picking, poking, excessive touching. She was more agreeable, had fewer and shorter tantrums, and her food cravings were gone, and she's now sleeping through the night. And after a couple of months, her mom, Joni, called me and said this quote, this is the year of firsts for Adrian. She started to ask questions. She's realizing that someone ha else has their own perspective. She started to pick out her own clothes and she's bathing and dressing independently. And she's now finally having a daily bowel movement. And because she's so calm and available, she's more open to learning. And at the age of 18, she's beginning to understand that written words have meaning and she's learning to read. And her mom, Jody, wrote the summary and then commented, it's amazing on how much she knows. I'm sorry, this picture is so blurry. This is my son, Isaiah, at 15. And my hope is through his suffering, I can convey some valuable messages to help with those of you who have older children. Isaiah, like the children who are significantly impacted by their autism, spent most of his life screaming and tantruming. And although he made some nice gains with biomedical treatments, his life was still a struggle. We never knew when the next storm was going to hit. And at the age of 12, I met an angel, Elaine Gottschall. And like Adrian, Isaiah had a dramatic, almost miraculous response to it. He is nowhere near what people would consider recovered, but now he's living a different life, a fantastic life. Two years ago, he transitioned into high school without a hitch, and at the age of 16, he started to take piano lessons. He joined the track team this year, and he's currently taking acting lessons. But the most amazing transformation for us to see is his personality. When children are in pain, it's difficult for everyone. And it's not the greatest circumstance to have them establish relationships. People don't have the opportunity to see how wonderful these children are until they're comfortable. So Carol and the adults in her practice, Adrian and Isaiah, taught me that what we're talking about is health. And when you're feeling better, you do better. And everyone can always do better. You have to first remove the obstacles like pain and open up the opportunities for brain growth. So my last take home message is, there may, there's probably a window for recovery, but there are probably windows for everything. If you wait until you're 30 to start taking ballet classes, you've probably missed the opportunity and the window to become a ballerina, but it doesn't mean you can't dance. As you explore the options to help your children, especially those of you who have older children, you have to keep in mind that most people equate language to intelligence, and that expressive language is not only or maybe not even the best measure of intelligence. So your fight to get people to recognize the abilities of your child is a lonely one. But I can tell you from my clinical and personal experience that it doesn't matter if you're 2 or 22, Gastrointestinal issues and pain interrupts development at any age. So get the illness out of the way and let the development proceed. Thank you very much. <clears throat>